Now you do have keyless access on the Tonale. You do have a touch panel back here to open the door and you close it with this button. Power folding mirrors as well. Again, nice um, that material carries over to the doors right here. But we do have some harder plastics up here. It is a little bit more soft touch, but not super premium. Uh, nice Alfa Romeo aluminum side plate as well, which looks nice. And here you can get a better look of these seats. You can see with the Alfa Romeo badge and kind of embossed here. This is actually stitched actually into the head headrest. Feels very premium and nice. Red stitching all around. And a really nice um, blend of that Alcantara dynamic material in here. Let's hop inside. Love the graphics on this interior as well for the Tonale. Very nice premium feeling interior. Now let's start it up. Okay guys, let's go hop in the back of the Tonale. Now I had the same issue on this car that I did with the Hornet where this kind of Rear end piece sticks out just a little bit too much to the point where you can kind of hit your arm on this sometimes. Just one thing to look out for. Now, what do we have back here? Shocking, it's pretty much identical to the Hornet. Though I do like this unique seat design you can get on the Alfa Romeos. I think you can actually get this on the Hornets in a different kind of style, but this weird kind of blend of this Dynamica with this unique pattern here. This is actually like a perforation. So the, this red material is behind this top layer. Really cool look, um, blended with leather. Let's hop inside. You can see here, my legroom is actually not too bad. I'm sitting behind myself. The seats themselves are sculpted well enough that I can fit back here. Decent amount of legroom, good amount of knee room actually. So not too bad with the space back here, though it is a little bit on the tighter end in general. We do have some storage back here as well as on your passenger side. Center console is pretty slim. You have these two air vents, a USB-C and a port, as well as a kind of um, air control there. So. Nothing too much going on back here, which is as, as expected for the class. And you can also see that material carrying over to these seats. Really nice looking material on here. It feels very premium. And you have that leather as well contrasting that. This one does have a center package, thankfully. Um, though it doesn't go all the way back. It really just goes to the back of the heads of the driver and front passenger. Back here, it's a little bit darker. You can see we have these LED lights and a little bit of a nice scallop out here to kind of fit your heads in it. I would say I have this much of Hyper Room Bay almost an inch i would say not a full inch um but it's not too bad here you can see your front cabin here back here also it's going to get you this center console folding down with leather two cup holders here and that's about it for your amenities no heated seats back here or anything like that um that nice material the seats the seats themselves very comfortable good thigh support as well for the rear and not bad with um rear glass you have a lot of space back here so it doesn't feel super cramped which isn't a bad thing at all let's go hop up front Now you do have keyless access on the Tonale. You do have a touch panel back here to open the door and you close it with this button. Power folding mirrors as well. Again, nice, um, that material carries over to the doors right here. But we do have some harder plastics up here. It is a little bit more soft touch, but not super premium. Uh, nice Alfa Romeo aluminum side plate as well, which looks nice. And here you can get a better look of these seats. You can see with the Alfa Romeo badge and kind of embossed here. This is actually stitched actually into the head headrest. Feels very premium and nice. Red stitching all around. And a really nice um, blend of that Alcantara dynamic material in here. Let's hop inside. Love the graphics on this interior as well for the Tonale. Very nice premium feeling interior. Now let's start it up. Now, unlike the Hornet, the stop, stop button is actually on the steering wheel like other Alfa Romeos. And the Hornet has that moved over there. So let's turn it on. Power mirrors unfold and the vehicle comes to life. A little bit of a warning chime going on there, and here we are inside of the Tonale. So again, nice Alfa Romeo steering wheel here, good grips on here. This is pretty much lifted straight from the Giulia and the Stelvio. We also get these gorgeous metal paddle shifters, aluminum paddle shifters here. Real metal, they feel fantastic. Very nice clicking sound. So it's your upshift and your downshift over here. This controls your six-speed automatic gearbox here. When you're kind of in like that dynamic mode, I would really use that the most. Um, it actually works pretty well. Um, though this isn't, I guess, the real car that, that you'd want paddle shifters for, though it does add a nice touch. Like I said, the start-stop button is it's on the steering wheel here. We also have all of our controls for our highway driving assist function. This has a full kind of highway driving assist features on here. And on our right-hand side, we have our controls for our digital gauge cluster, as well as our, some volume and track tuning controls as well, which is very nice. 
Um, this digital cluster is actually pretty nice of a cluster and it's unique of a skin for alpha or male. Um, you can see we have this kind of simplified gauge here. We have a really simplified gauge here. Then we can go through these kind of unique style older alpha or male gauges here, which kind of mimic their older vehicles. It even says Giri here instead of um, RPM, which is kind of cool. Nice looking gauges and they do change with depending on your drive mode. You can see our electric range on the bottom right, our fuel range, and then we have a blended information in the center. And all of this can be customized and changed by pressing these buttons on the steering wheel here. So I can make this really big, for example, and I can put in a map versus all, and all these other different displays here. So I can load a map display. So it's almost like an Audi virtual cockpit. It's really dynamic in its versatility and able to kind of customize all the different features in here. So I do like that, I do appreciate that. Um, I like all the different information that you can get in this, this display. So good work on that um, in this vehicle. I also kind of like the more traditional style cockpit display. I believe they call it the Kanye Chale. It looks really nice. I, I kind of prefer it versus these giant plastered on screens that just cover the entire dash. It gives us more cockpit feel. You can also notice on here that this um, Alcantara material carries over onto the upper portion of the dash here with this nice red stitching. Feels very premium, very solid, good build quality in general. I like this lock unlock button with this little red indicator here. We have metal um, door poles, which is nice. So a nice premium touch here. I will say this button doesn't feel the most high quality. Kind of hear some spring action going on there. I wish they kind of worked on that. But I do want to touch on this ambient lighting on here. Check this out. So this ambient lighting features a little bit right here. It carries throughout the entire dash. Let me just turn the interior lights off for you guys real quick. And you can see this really cool ambient lighting here. And you can change the colors. So right now it's blue. And you have a few other colors you kind of cycle through um, from, let's just go to our app page here. Apps, favorites, I believe I changed. There we go, ambient color. You have a few different color options right here. You have a green color. You can see there, you have a white, a yellow, as well as a red. You can also turn them completely off if you don't want to look at these colors whatsoever, which is nice, but I'm going to keep it on. So I think the red looks really nice, so we'll keep it on that for now. And that blends in the entire dash, and you can change the intensity of it as well, like I said, as just turn it off if you don't want to look at it whatsoever. Um, also in this interior, we can see we have our drive mode selector here, and we have three different drive modes. So we have advanced efficiency down here. This is technically your pure EV mode, though if you are stepping on it hard enough, pushing it down onto the kick down pedal, or if you need traction on those rear wheels, it will kick on the engine. But generally, A, advanced efficiency is going to be for your EV driving. Then we go over to N, which is kind of natural mode. This is your blended kind of hybrid driving style situation. So it's going to prioritize your EV system, though the engine will be more likely to turn on half the time. Then we have full on dynamic mode. You can hear the engine is going to kick on here. You can see our gauges got a little bit more aggressive throughout the mode. So here we have natural, here we have advanced efficiency, and then we're going to kick it right up to dynamic mode. And you can see the gauges got a little bit more aggressive. The engine is on and it's ready to go. Now in this mode, you can see in our vehicle modes here, we'll go to our e-hybrid page. Um, this mode is going to allow us to change our adaptive damper settings. So right now it's in the stiff dampers and put it into soft dampers just like that. You can see here, we're actually charging the battery pack um, in dynamic mode. So it's going to make sure we have enough juice to kind of constantly pump out all the power at all times while also maintaining a battery state of charge. And I think this is really cool with display where you can see the power flow of the engine, the battery pack, and even the climate system and its draw on this electrical system, which is really cool. Very nice gauges and display there. And this is kind of how it works in dynamic mode. I really like that. Um, down here, we can see have our separated um, climate controls here that we do have a climate screen in here. This is where you're going to be able to access a few more information like your heated seats as well as your heated steering wheel. Unfortunately, this is buried into these menus, though you can press these little quick shortcuts up here. I don't know why things are not working today. Here we go. <laughs> Some quick shortcuts for our climate controls if we don't want to dive into the actual menus. Otherwise, um, you do have physical buttons down here for some more common controls. You see this nice slim air vent cluster here with our hazard lights, which is nice. And down here, we have a nice big wireless charging mat with the Alpha Male logo right on there. Nice big shifter for our six-speed automatic gearbox. Dedicated manual mode, though it will upshift um, if you're kind of on it and you're not shifting. It's just, I think, the protective powertrain. We have a physical scroll wheel here for our volume and kind of a mute switch, as well as our electronic parking brake. Here we down here, we have our e-save mode. So this mode is going to we put it on or in normal mode. It's going to kick the engine on and we're going to be able to charge the battery. 
You actually have some e-save settings in here. So if I go to scroll down this menu, press e-save, you can see here the different settings you have for your e-save modes. So we have battery save, battery charge, we can change different target battery set levels. So when we press that e-save button, which is pretty cool. You also have charging schedules, some driving history here. We can see our regenerative braking history, which is pretty interesting. And we can go right back to our power flow display there, which is cool. We also have a, a automatic parking assist, which is nice, as well as parking sensors you can turn off if you want to do that for some reason. Um, again, nice, decently sized sunroof over here for the front passenger and driver, though it doesn't really benefit the rear passengers that much. And again, nice kind of design and layout on the dash. We have these circular style air vents up here, which look quite nice. And generally, it's a decent interior. I don't know how about for like fifty thousand dollars, like this one is. It's a little bit getting expensive here, but generally pretty good build quality isn't actually really that bad though i think the material quality overall could be a little bit better generally not bad though for this class this is competing with things like the q3 and x1 um, in that range of vehicles very slim center armrest here um, decent amount of storage not too big and of course we do have an actual glove box in here which is nice actually pretty decently sized glove box here we can see our monroney sticker as well coming in at fifty two thousand seven. $90 on this particular one though you can lease these I believe with a $7,500 tax credit as of now as long as that stands otherwise guys let's go take this thing on the drive so we can play around with this plug-in hybrid powertrain okay guys let's go hop in the back of the Tonalit now I had the same issue on this car that I did with the Hornet where this kind of rear end piece sticks out just a little bit too much to the point where you can kind of hit your arm on this sometimes just one thing to look out for now what do we have back here Shocking, it's pretty much identical to the Hornet. Though I do like this unique seat design you can get on the upper males. I think you can actually get this on the Hornets in a different kind of style, but this weird kind of blend of this Dynamica with this unique pattern here. This is actually like a perforation. So the, this red material is behind this top layer. A really cool look, um, blended with leather, top and side. You can see here, my legroom is actually not too bad. I'm sitting behind myself. The seats themselves are sculpted well enough that I can fit back here. Decent amount of legroom, good amount of knee room actually. So not too bad with the space back here, though it is a little bit on the tighter end in general. We do have some storage back here as well as on your passenger side. Center console is pretty slim. You have these two air vents, a USB-C and a port, as well as a kind of um, air control there. So. Nothing too much going on back here, which is as, as expected for the class. And you can also see that material carrying over to these seats. Really nice looking material on here. It feels very premium. And you have that leather as well contrasting that. This one does have a center package, thankfully. Um, though it doesn't go all the way back. It really just goes to the back of the heads of the driver and front passenger. Back here, it's a little bit darker. You can see we have these LED lights and a little bit of a nice scallop out here to kind of fit your heads in it. I would say I have this much of Hyper Room Bay almost an inch i would say not a full inch um but it's not too bad here you can see your front cabin here back here also it's going to get you this center console folding down with leather two cup holders here and that's about it for your amenities no heated seats back here or anything like that um that nice material the seats the seats themselves very comfortable good thigh support as well for the rear and not bad with um rear glass you have a lot of space back here so it doesn't feel super cramped which isn't a bad thing at all Let's